Meet John Joel Glanton, the scalp-hunting mercenary who terrorized the Old West. John Joel Glanton was indeed a notorious figure in the Wild West, and his actions were far from the romanticized portrayals often seen in Hollywood. He and his gang engaged in brutal activities that terrorized the Apache for profit during the 1840s, making him one of the most ruthless villains of the era. While the American West is often associated with opportunities and adventure, it was also a place where some of the darkest and most violent stories in American history unfolded. Glanton's life as a scalp hunter in the Sonora Desert, leading a band of murderers to mutilate Apache natives for money, stands as a stark reminder of the harsh realities that existed on the frontier during that time. His story serves as a testament to the complex and often brutal history of the Wild West, far removed from the idealized narratives of the era. John Joel Glanton's early life was marked by a series of challenging circumstances and experiences that would ultimately shape him into the notorious figure he became. Born to poor white farmers in Edgefield, South Carolina in 1819, Glanton's upbringing occurred during a period when the United States was expanding westward. After his father's death, Glanton's family relocated to Arkansas, where his mother remarried a plantation owner. Even before reaching his 16th birthday, Glanton had already developed a reputation for extreme violence and had reportedly become involved in outlaw activities in Tennessee. However, it was in Texas that he would further solidify his reputation as a ruthless figure. In 1835, Texas was a region largely occupied by squatters and contested between Mexico and the United States. Mexico, not yet independent from Spain, faced the challenge of dealing with a significant population of squatters who refused to pay taxes or acknowledge Mexican authority over Texas land. This period led to the Texas War of Independence and a young 16-year-old Glanton joined this tumultuous conflict. During the war, Glanton distinguished himself as a scout, a role that demanded swift riding over vast distances, quick thinking, and resourcefulness. He managed to survive the war relatively unscathed. In the following years, he moved between Louisiana, Arkansas, and San Antonio, where he became a part of John C. Hayes's company of Texas Rangers. During this time, Glanton was reportedly engaged, but a tragic event occurred when his fiancée was allegedly kidnapped and scalped by Apache natives, which would have a profound impact on his life and actions in the years to come. John Joel Glanton's life continued to evolve as he remarried and started a family, fathering a son. During this period, tensions between Mexico and the Texians, as the residents of Texas were known at the time, remained high. In 1846, the United States declared war on Mexico, seeking territorial expansion. Glanton seized the opportunity and enlisted as a lieutenant in the Texas Mounted Rifle Volunteers, a regiment that played a role in countering guerrilla warfare during the conflict. This marked a significant chapter in Glanton's life, as he became involved in a larger and more formal military engagement, which would further shape his experiences and actions in the years ahead. For a time in the early years of the Mexican Republic, scalps became the basis of a grisly trade for men like John Joel Glanton. All across the harsh terrain of the Sonora Desert, Glanton and his men hunted Apaches for their scalps. The northern Mexican states of Sonora, Chihuahua, and Coahuila had long been plagued by Apache raids. These Native American tribes raided settlers in the region as a means of sustenance and defense against Spanish and later Mexican forces encroaching on their lands. In 1835, Manuel Escalante y Arvisu, the governor of Sonora, came up with a brutal solution to the Apache problem. He offered a bounty of 100 pesos, equivalent to roughly $100 at the time, for each Apache scalp brought to his capital at Arizpe. Escalante Arvizu believed that this horrific incentive might help counter the Apache threat, as his military forces were unable to defeat them through conventional means. The governors of Chihuahua and Coahuila soon followed suit, offering varying rates for the scalps of Native American men, women, and children. This gruesome practice of offering bounties for scalps became part of a deeply troubling chapter in Mexican and American history. After the Mexican-American War ended in 1848, John Joel Glanton found himself out of work. The following year, 
he left his wife and child to lead a group of gold prospectors from California to Mexico. When this venture failed, he turned to the scalp trade, exploiting his violent skills in a brutal practice that targeted Native American communities. John Joel Glanton arrived in Mexico at a time when the scalp hunting business was booming. Notably, this gruesome trade had already attracted a diverse group of individuals, including a Seminole war party from Florida and a team of runaway slaves. Soon, Glanton formed the infamous Glanton Gang, which, according to accounts, included a young soldier named Samuel Chamberlain. Samuel Chamberlain would go on to write extensively about his experiences alongside Glanton, providing one of the most well-known accounts of the gang's activities. The year 1849 marked a significant period for the Glanton Gang and other scalp hunters in Mexico. During this time, Mexican governors were paying substantial sums for scalps, and they engaged in grisly competitions, with some offering prizes as high as $1,000 for a single warrior's scalp. This gruesome practice attracted ruthless individuals who saw an opportunity to profit from violence and brutality. The Glanton Gang scoured the desolate Sonora Desert, relentlessly attacking Apache bands, particularly focusing on those too small to defend themselves, including defenseless women and children. Despite their ruthless tactics, the Apaches refused to yield to the scalpers and began mounting a formidable resistance. They retaliated by killing scalpers and using their knowledge of the unforgiving landscape to evade their pursuers, ultimately undermining the profitability of the gruesome scalp trade. As it seemed that scalping had run its course, Glanton refused to give up. Instead, he shifted his focus to the scalps of Mexican peasants and other Native Americans. Glanton believed that no one could distinguish an Apache scalp from that of another Native American or Mexican. This shift reignited the gruesome trade as scalp hunters began targeting anyone with brown skin and dark hair. In 1849, the state of Chihuahua alone paid out $17,896 in bounties, equivalent to approximately $601,210 by 2020 standards. However, when Mexican authorities discovered that Glanton was collecting Mexican scalps, Governor Angel Trias Alvarez of Chihuahua placed a staggering bounty of $268,756 on Glanton's head by today's standards. Fleeing with his remaining men, Glanton hurriedly made his way to Sonora, but he quickly overstayed his welcome there as well, forcing him and his gang to escape north into Arizona. Upon reaching the Colorado River, which marked the border between Sonora and Arizona, John Glanton and his gang encountered a ferry operated by A.L. Lincoln, a fellow Mexican-American war veteran who had just made a fortune transporting immigrants on their way to join the California gold rush. However, it was Lincoln's unfortunate fate to have Glanton as his next passenger. While Lincoln had initially agreed to employ six of Glanton's men, Glanton decided he wanted to own the ferry business himself. He chased Lincoln out of the enterprise and began robbing and extorting its passengers, charging exorbitant fares, sometimes as much as 10 times the previous rates. Adjacent to Lincoln's Ferry was a rival operation run by local Yuma Native Americans. Glanton managed to insult their chief, leading to mounting tension between the two groups. The Yuma warriors, angered by Glanton's actions, began biding their time. In late April 1850, Glanton and some of his men traveled to San Diego to deposit the proceeds of their ferry racket, committing at least one murder along the way. Upon returning to their camp in the sweltering midday heat, they decided to take a siesta. However, even in sleep, there was no escape from the consequences of their violence and greed. The Yuma chief had patiently assembled hundreds of Yuma warriors, who launched a sudden attack on Glanton's camp while he and his men slept. In a brutal and grisly assault, the Yuma beat, knifed, and scalped all of the men, including Glanton himself. John Glanton remained a relatively obscure figure in history until the publication of Cormac McCarthy's novel, Blood Meridian. The novel, which provides a mostly accurate account of the scalp trade, was heavily based on Samuel Chamberlain's memoir. Blood Meridian is often considered one of McCarthy's most chilling works and has been regarded as difficult to adapt into a film due to the nightmarish deeds of Glanton and his gang.